Hey there, Tane from Exploit Creative here, about to caricature Carl Baron, and I'll share with, uh, with you my commentary as I draw. So, my first impressions of Carl Baron are that he has a large bald head, which is worth uh, <laughs> exaggerating straight off the bat. He's got ears that stick out um, fairly enough that it's worth actually just mucking around with those. I might just thin down this head because I want to put more volume into... Actually, I want to make his head seem thinner because it kind of is. It's, it's like a kind of a... it's a sort of a bony head. Um, he's got some pretty pronounced cheekbones, so we'll, we'll go with that. Just in the, in the short term there and we'll make sure... He's got a some pretty manly jawline business going on over here, so we'll, we'll get those draw lines in. We might even lengthen them down or, or not, depending on how we go. Maybe we'll, we'll bring the the bald head, give it a bit more of a priority than the chin. So let's see how we go with all that. I've decided to exaggerate the bald head more than the chin. I might round it out a bit more because his head isn't really spiky, it's kind of round. Um, just grab the smooth tool for that. Okay, now moving back onto the pen I'm going to grab a thinner... Now that I've done the outline of the head actually I might just do the neck. Make him kind of poke out. With a long, longish neck. <laughs> okay. So now that I've done the outlines of all the, the head, I'm going to switch down to a smaller uh, thickness of line. I might try and do the eyebrows. And the first thing I look for is whether the eyebrows are above the ear. And they are a bit above the ear, so... Either I pull the ear down a little bit, or bring the eyebrows up. I'm going to pull the ears down a little bit, so that I can keep the eyebrows fairly well below the uh, you know the, the bald head. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just trying to follow this this kind of look he's got here. It comes His eyebrow comes up and then just kind of comes out like that. So I'm just going to try and capture that. <laughs> it looks kind of like a worried looking cartoon, but to him on, on his photo it's more like a confidence thing. And that should probably come through once we get uh, the other features in. Let's do the nose. Let's have a look at his T-shape, his eyes. His nose isn't that long, so... It looks long in these pictures, you gotta be careful with the perspective, but... Uh, it's not that long, so we'll just bring it up. And it's not that, you know... An important part of his face, but... I guess uh, there's something kinda... Big about the bulb. It's not that big a deal on his face. Let's have a look at his mouth. His mouth is smaller than a lot of the other parts of his, his face and hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make the assumption that there's a fair bit of space between the nose and the mouth like this area and kind of try to exaggerate that a bit so now that I know where my mouth is I'm gonna pull the jawline up meet it a little bit because I don't want the chin to be to seem to be longer than how it seems to be on his actual face I want to bring in that sort of that gap toothed grin that he's got so I'm doing that <laughs> I'm not sure if it's gonna work out but we'll see how we go
Okay, so his... It kind of looks like his mouth, but it's not happy enough, it's not grinny enough. So I'm just going to put a little... Dimples up the side. Hopefully we can get... A little uh, smirky grin happening. What about his bottom lip, lower lip? Yeah, he's got a fair bit of a, a lower lip there. And it's kind of like a... It's got a bit of depth to it, so I'll, I'll switch back to a fairly deep... Uh, a fairly thick line for that. I'm just going to redraw this because I wasn't happy with how I did that. And I might redo the corners a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that pretty much looks like him with the mouth, at least. So let's move along to getting that jawline pretty <laughs> pronounced. Alright, I might just do a little tad for the ears, now that we're detailing this section of the head. Um, let's have a look at maybe doing a few of those wrinkles that he's got there. I don't know if that's a good idea, no, I, <laughs> he's, he's looking older and older the more lines I add, so I'm going to stick without the wrinkles on the top there. And uh, we'll see how we go. Let's do uh, try and do some eyes. I might thin down the neck just to give it a bit more of a cartoony, fun feel. Thick necks are kind of I don't know for thick people. Um, let's move on to the eyes. Let's have a look. His eyes. Well, there's a bit of a bridge happening, like a thin bridge that kind of comes back out to a bigger bulb of the nose. Okay, uh, his eyes, how do I, his eyes kind of seem big in these images, but then his eyes kind of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the assumption that his eyes are fairly big, compared to the average face, and I'm going to follow the shape of them, and we'll see if this uh, assumption works out. He's got a little bit of the uh, the upper eyelid, which is, you know, the tired look, but sometimes it's important for some likenesses that you, that you kind of put that in. Um, shall I just kind of thicken up that section of the eyebrow there? I suppose so. Yep. That adds a little. His eyebrow is more, to me, it's more about the brow, not so much, I mean, like, the brow line, not so much the hair that's on top of it. It seems like a very, uh, bony face. Um... Okay, now for the eyeballs, I suppose. This is always the part where, when you put in the eyeballs, you kind of know whether the eye shape you've done is right or not. You'll end up uh, developing that sort of that feel as to whether, you know, the second you do it, you go, oh, that's kind of wrong, or oh, that feels pretty much like Carl Barron. You got all type of people who, you know, yeah, okay. My, my instinct is telling me that um, maybe the ears should actually be quite large again. The, my instinct is telling me that the face is right. The ears are quite... not quite Carl Barron. There's something wrong about the ears. It might be the shape of them. That might be it. And you get that instinct after just doing lots and lots of faces. That's it's all it's as simple as that. 
and my instinct isn't perfect yet which is why I'm still stuffing around and it's below 10 minutes I should have gotten into the coloring already I'm talking to you <laughs> which is what this video is all about I want to try and get a bit more smile into this uh, face yeah all right look I'm, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have to stop myself there and go on to the coloring otherwise I'm gonna lose a lot of time um, uh, yeah <laughs> stop it stop it onto the coloring fool move it okay now I'm gonna switch down to the layer below and just start drawing in that that coloring I'm gonna leave a big white circle up the top there you probably can't see the line that I'm drawing in real time but here it is so I've left a big spot up there as a sort of a <laughs> you know what I mean do the eyes do the teeth see how the eyes work out Sometimes when you put in the whites, it kind of, it can feel wrong and then you have to kind of mess around with your eyes. So I might have to pull this down. Because this, this uh, pupil isn't hitting the bottom of the eye like the other one, I pull it down and then it kind of becomes a bit more uh, dealable with. I'm just gonna erase this little bit, it's very annoying. There we go. Okay, what do we got? Um, oof, we're on seven minutes. Okay, okay, okay. The shirt color, I'll just select uh, a red or what? Pastel red, which is what I usually use. I usually use pastel colors so that they don't overtake the colors of the subject the skin colors and stuff you want all the attention to go on to the you know the face and stuff like that um you know, i suspect that a fair bit of the likeness will come through once we start actually putting some shadows in so let's do that i'm gonna have to select play around with my colors. I'm going to change to HSB because forget RGB, it's just HSB gives me all these cool little tools that I actually want, like saturation uh, darkness and stuff like that. Alright, that's maybe I can go with that. And then let's uh, let's darkify the cheekbones. I'm just switching between eyedropper and pen on the shortcuts on my Wacom really quickly. Let's keep filling these in until I get the effect that I'm looking for. So you always kind of, to know where you put the shading, you always kind of think, you know, where's where's a bit of depth? I, I kind of shade as if the sun was on the right of the person. It's because the first thing I do uh, is just do that that little bit under the neck it points to the left a little bit of shading under the neck I mean and uh, and it all kind of flows on from there okay so here we go with this part I think this is a really actually an important part of the likeness is that there's a huge shadow underneath uh, well connecting his his eyes to his eyebrows. A fair bit of shadow there. It's kind of, it kind of got a, a bit of a pit, an eye pit going on. Just part of the barren look. Maybe I'll attempt a few little lines there. I don't know. Let's see how that works. Oh, 
Okay. So let's do the side of the face shadow. And like that. And I, I like to do a little, a little bit lesser on the right side, just because it's kind of like actual photography studio key lighting. It actually looks cooler. The white space, which acts as the key light, the white space between the black uh, strokes and this dark colouring that I'm doing right now. Well, that's the key key light there, but just the graduation between the normal skin, the dark skin, and complete white. Normal, dark, and complete white. So that contrast there actually works out really cool. From a, uh, just look at a bunch of movie posters. You'll see what I mean with the way they light things. I think you already know what I'm talking about, so. trying to make this happen so he's got um, shall I shall I attempt a bit of under eye shadow sometimes this is a bit much but uh, you never know you never know if it's part of who they are it's not a very flattering thing to do sometimes but I think now that we've got just a darker version of the skin colour, we can actually try and do some wrinkles without being too offensive to the subject. Okay, it's just kind of getting a bit more barren. I'm going to put in some stubble here. Um, and I'm doing that by selecting basically black. And gonna draw a fat moustache sitting right here and tone it down with like maybe 10 even 5% opacity <sighs> on-screen keyboards help and then I'm gonna just kind of keep drawing over the top of it for for darker gradations that might be a bit too much what about his cheekbones is there a bit of stubble there maybe not but can always stand to shadow it up a bit. Now I'm looking at his chin again and I'm thinking maybe it, it's not so much a pointy chin but more of a flat chin. And that might be something I missed before. So there we go, that's looking a bit more like him. Oh yes, his uh, hairline of course. There's always stuff you miss, you gotta kind of commit them to memory, otherwise you just forget them. The most important thing is that first impression where you just get everything, you know everything you need to do in one go, but then you just, you get into your drawing and you just forget about all those really important bits. Here we're going to do this hairline, which... Uh, might have to be toned up another to 10% or you never know okay that's fairly all right uh, what else is going on with this guy Got a bit of stubble on his chin. So now my instinct is telling me like, yeah, this is all looking pretty good. Uh, sometimes I even just go down and do a bit of shading on the shirt just to keep it consistent. Get rid of that stroke. Yeah, so that's my time up. I've, I've gone, I'm gonna go a bit over time here because 
I want to turn this into something worth actually, you know, putting on some social networks or whatever. So, uh, yeah, anyway, back to what I was saying. The My instincts are telling me right now that the eyes are probably too big or there's something wrong with the eyes. I don't think the eyes fit across his face. His eyes sit uh, a bit more into the center of his face. Like they, the edges of his eyes don't reach very far to the edges of his face. So I'm going to pull them in. They're gonna they're gonna look a bit bug-eyed when you do this, <laughs> or you know. But I think there's something about the eyes that needs to be fixed in order to get more likeness. I'm very you don't have to be this picky about likeness. I mean, some would say that this you know this looks like Carl Baron, but. I don't know, if you're like me, you got a streak, perfectionist streak that just make keeps kicking you in the ass. Okay, that's looking good. What I might do is the last thing I want to do is make his eye the the crevice underneath his eyebrows a lot darker, so I'm just gonna do some more circles. Well, more areas of uh the stubble grey just to colour them in, make them a bit darker do that in several waves it's very, might be a kind of indistinguishable what I'm doing right now on your screen but basically I'm building up lots and lots of layers each of about 5% opacity until I get those dark brows that I'm after. Underbrows. It's probably a term for that as well. Um, not really interested. Maybe darken under the. Uh, whatever those are called. I've even forgotten what those are called. Honestly. Oh yeah, ask you. Might even darken up some of the underside of this. Throw it up to... I don't know, what, what do we got here? Oop. 10% uh, opacity. Might do us proud. So yeah, usually I like to do all this in... I give myself 20 minutes. I'm really trying to get my draw time down on these things. Through practice. But yeah, this would be, ooh, what happened there? Right, layers above the black line layer, that's not good. Get back there. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? <laughs> um... There's something missing here, and that's the that's one thing I always add to make it look just cooler. Is the shine? Let's get some more shine in here. White spots. Yeah, play up that boldness. Have a look at where where which spots on his face actually shine in the image. I kind of take a a, uh, a direction from that. Uh, yep, I guess that's about it. The shine's always cool because it brings in a cartoony kind of plastic look that just... It just saves the whole image, even if the image is, is crap. It just saves it. <laughs> Give it a try. I might even darken up the... Uh, the mo, The stubble over here a little bit more. Just to give it a bit more punch. Okay. I'm going to stop and look at this for a sec. And uh, I think I should really cut off this video here. But, uh, oh yes, there is one more thing. 
His hairline actually comes down. There's a bit of a bit of a funny hair thing going on here, like a circle of hair. Well, stubble. <laughs> Head stubble. Hubble. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Shall we bring up the cheekbones a little bit more? Yeah. I think that was a good idea. So, are there any observations that you've seen in Carl Baron's face? Possibly that could have been added to this. Uh, so chuck something in the comments. Uh, your first impressions. Because... You know, not everyone gets 100% of the subject's likeness. Tell me about your first impressions, you know, what, what was it a face? What did I miss out on? Came back and had another look at the image and decided that the hair needed to be darkened up and uh, the eyebrows shortened from the sides. And there it was. A little bit less shine, but there it was. It was, uh, I was happy with it. So there you go. Look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like. Uh, music in this video is by Sharpside, who's graciously provided some unreleased tracks. You won't find them on his profile, but uh, you can check out soundcloud.com slash sharpside for more awesome music. Smooth stuff. And uh, you can go to exploitcreative.com.au for gift caricatures for your friends and family. Uh, always good fun.